Jerry? Yeah, what, what, what can I do for you? Show me the money. <laughs> Stephen Curry is the NBA's latest revolutionary. Team shooting record amount of threes, positionless ISO oriented basketball, it is all a merit of the Golden State Warriors superstar. And let me tell you, he sure has cashed in on his influence. With a net worth of approximately $130 million, Steph is 15th on the list of wealthiest basketball players ever. The 1920 NBA season alone will bring Curry roughly $85 million, which makes him the second highest paid NBA player in the world. Curry's $40.2 million salary is the highest in the history of the NBA, as roughly $45 million of his total yearly earnings come from endorsements and his off-court ventures. And trust me, there's more where that came from for the 32-year-old superstar. Steph is in the third year of his $201 million extension signed in 2017, with his on-court earnings progressively growing over the rest of the contract. Add to it the money he's set to make from his off-court investments, and it won't take long before Curry climbs the ladder of the NBA's biggest money makers. But first, let's see how Stefan got into such a position in the first place. Buckle up, we're about to embark on an adventure that is Steph Curry's bank account. So without any further ado, here comes the third installment of Show Me The Money. Skip Bayless may not be the epitome of great basketball takes, but he was sure right when he said that the point guard from Davidson College should have gone first overall in the 2009 NBA draft. Instead, Curry fell all the way down to number 7, becoming one of the biggest draft steals in NBA history. Guys who went before Steph? How about Blake Griffin, Hashim Tabid, James Harden, Tyree Kevins, Ricky Rubio, and Johnny Flynn? Oh, and the latter two were both picked by the Timberwolves. Looking at the aftermath of the draft, I bet it sucks to be a T-Wolves fan. The scouting report on Curry was clear. Lacks explosiveness and athleticism, not a natural point guard, but lacks the size to play a two guard, and not a great finisher around the rim, also a poor defender. Well, all of that was deducted after Steph's rookie season in the NBA. Except for his defensive weaknesses, of course, although he did become a passable NBA defender. Curry finished second in the Rookie of the Year voting behind Sacramento's Tyreek Evans. He put up 17.5 points per game along with 4.5 rebounds and 5.9 assists while immediately becoming one of the best sharpshooters in the association. Rookie Steph Curry announced himself to the NBA world as the next exciting point guard, making it obvious the teams that passed up on him on the draft night made a mistake. The Thunder, taken Harden, excluded. What came after was a gradual development of a young guard, slowed down by an ankle injury in his third year in the league. But then came the 12-13 NBA season, or the Stephen Curry breakout year. Steph bumped his scoring average to 22.9 a game and established himself as one of the best young point guards in the league. The story behind it? The financial stability Curry secured after signing his $44 million extension, the night before their season opener against the Suns. Up until that point, Steph was on his rookie deal that brought him approximately $12.09 million over 4 years. Him inking a $44 million extension was a bargain. The Warriors took a risk on Curry's ankles as he was just coming off a second consecutive arthroscopic surgery. Golden State bet on their guy and it paid dividends over the long run. They signed a franchise cornerstone to a friendly deal while gaining the flexibility to build around him. And as you know, they did an incredible job doing so. Curry responded the best way possible, winning the regular season MVP award and leading the dubs to an NBA championship the second year into his extension. He became NBA's first unanimous MVP the very next year as he led the Warriors to a record-breaking 73-9 regular season record. But their efforts were in vain as the Cleveland Cavaliers edged Golden State in Game 7 of the Finals becoming the first team in NBA history to overcome a 3-1 deficit in the cross-conference matchup. Remember the dub signing Curry to a bargain deal? Well, that turned out to be one of the key factors to Golden State acquiring the biggest of the free agents in the summer of 2016, none other than Kevin Durant. As if having Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, and Draymond Green wasn't enough. No, the Warriors had to add one of the best players in the world to arguably already the best team in the world. It meant only one thing, the basketball juggernaut was formed. You all know the story, the Warriors went to the finals for 3 straight years and won back to back NBA championships before having their run ended by the Raptors in 2019. Kevin Durant signed with the Brooklyn Nets as the Warriors dynasty officially came to an end. And Steph Curry? 
he maintained his superstar level of play as he became the ultimate teammate who took a back seat to KD. But make no mistakes, Durant might have been their best player, but their most important one has always been Chef Curry, and Golden State rewarded him for it. I mean, really rewarded him. In 2017, Curry became Golden State's highest paid player for the first time of him being in the Bay Area. Steph agreed to a 5-year Supermax deal worth around $201 million, at the time the biggest contract in NBA history. Steph is still playing through his Supermax deal as the highest paid NBA player for the 1920 season with $40.2 million. It's worth noting that the contract includes no player options, meaning that Curry is locked for 2 more years after this season wraps up. Up until this point, Steph has made roughly $168 million from his Encore deals. When his deal expires, Curry will have a total of $250 million earned solely from his NBA salaries. Now he will be 35 and another huge cash out seems unlikely at that point, but you never know with Stephen. I mean no one even expected him to become the player he is today, so nothing is off the table with Curry. What we do know is that this isn't his last contract in the NBA. Baby-faced assassin will have a lot more money to show. By looking at the following table, we can see Steph's approximated career on court earnings. As he's been a warrior ever since draft day, his first contract playing from 2009 until 2013 earned Steph $12 million. Playing from 2014 until 2017 earned Steph $44 million. Playing from 2017 until 2020 earned Steph $112 million. And his latest contract with the Warriors, playing from 2020 until 2022, will earn Curry an additional $88 million. His total approximated on-court earnings are $257,250,833. NBA arenas aren't the only place where Chef Curry is cooking up his magic, as if becoming an NBA icon wasn't enough. No, Curry also had to embark on a business route, and to no one's surprise, it's another landscape Steph thrives on. Living in the Bay Area, Curry has been sucked in the world of high-tech innovation and venture capital. Curry's company, SC30, is responsible for Steph's complete off-court business portfolio. The company is run by Curry and Brian Barr, his former teammate at Davidson College. While Stephen was winning MVPs and rings, Brian's path led him to the Stanford Graduate School of Business, where he earned his MBA. In 2015, the two founded Slice and together secured investors and built a top-tier tech team and created products for some of the top brands in the world. After experiencing the ups and downs of the startup world, Stefan and Brian have switched gears to help other entrepreneurs become game changers in their respective fields. They've made a career of shooting their shot. The company's portfolio includes a wide range of businesses. Thus, SC30 invested in the esports organization called TSM as a part of a $37 million Series A funding. Curry is also an investor and advisor for Palm, where he is actively involved, from helping to name and create the product to designing and testing accessories. He can talk about Palm like their software developer. After all, Curry has been with Palm basically from the beginning, an experience most athlete endorsers don't get to have seeing an idea develop into a product. SC30 has also invested in Canadian travel startup Snap Travel, which utilizes artificial technology algorithms to assist the technology-savvy consumer to find and secure hotel deals. The company was founded in 2016 and already operates in 150 countries and has converted $50 million in sales in 2018. The first time guys from Snap Travel discussed the project with Steph was during the 2016 NBA playoffs. Fast forward two years later, a two-time MVP has become their strategic investor. Another one of Curry's investments was Guild Education. Guild is at the forefront of future work, partnering with Fortune 1000 companies and nonprofit universities to offer education benefits to their employees with a focus on frontline workers. They partner with America's largest companies including Walmart, Disney, Discover, Taco Bell, and Chipotle, to name a few. And in 2019, Curry became the company's investor with a mission to emphasize the importance of college education and college completion. His latest business outing is Curry becoming an equity partner with Oxygen, a beverage company that makes premium water that's supposed to assist in muscle recovery. He said he wants to make sure that people understand the benefits that the product brings to you just beyond the taste, all with an end goal of shifting the mentality to being health conscious and making your well-being a priority. 
In terms of endorsements, JP Morgan Chase unveiled their partnership with Stephen Curry right after announcing a naming rights deal for the Golden State Warriors new arena. Curry signed a multi-year deal with its exact worth being unknown. Moreover, Japanese electronic commerce and online retailing company Rakuten has also announced their partnership with the three-time NBA champion back in 2019. The partnership includes a multi-year agreement with Curry that appoints him as a brand ambassador for Rakuten. Rakuten will also be named the title sponsor of Curry's first of its kind basketball camp for overlooked prep athletes, underrated tour powered by Rakuten. As a global brand ambassador, Curry plays a pivotal role in growing the brand through US appearances, brand marketing and other promotions. It's no secret that Steph is a golf enthusiast. Well, in 2019, he entered into a unique partnership with the leading golf equipment manufacturer, Callaway Golf Company, after having an informal relationship with them for years. Together, they have committed to partnering on various initiatives Curry will undertake with a strong focus on expanding the game by making it more accessible to underserved and underrepresented youth. Steph is also following LeBron's and KD's footprints, as he's also co-founded a media company called Unanimous Media. Jaron Smith is the company's CEO and a man behind all projects, including dabbling in movies and TV shows and scouting locations overseas for Curry's underrated basketball camps through Rakuten. Nevertheless, the biggest source of Curry's off-court incomes remain his shoe deal with Under Armour. Half of his $45 million in yearly off-court earnings comes from his endorsement deal with UA, putting him fourth on the NBA's richest shoe deal list. Curry is still on the deal he signed in 2015, reportedly around $20 million annually up until 2024. When he first got into the league, Steph won with Nike, but when it was time to re-sign the young star, a shoe giant made a horrible pitching mistake. First, they addressed Stefan as Stefan. Then a PowerPoint slide featured KD's name instead of Curry's. They also didn't mention making Curry a signature athlete and also declined to give him his own camp. Those went to Kyrie Irving and Anthony Davis instead. It all resulted in Nike losing Steph in an embarrassing fashion which caused the company billions in potential revenue and altered the landscape of the basketball merchandise market. But in the end, it all turned out great for Steph. He's sitting on a huge deal with Under Armour, has his signature shoes, and is the face of the company. He's also involved with many different off-court projects as he's slowly making a transition into a world of business. However, the financial benefits of such outings are yet to be seen. What we do know is that in his first decade in the league, Curry earned roughly $130 million. His shoe deal will bring him approximately $90 million more, with his off-court earnings going north of $250 million by 2024. And that being the most pessimistic prediction. Whatever the case may be, one thing's for sure. Steph is utilizing his basketball greatness the best way possible both on and off the court. Being a millionaire living in the Bay Area, you already know Steph's got a Tesla Model X parked in his garage. Besides the luxury electric SUV, Steph is a proud owner of a $77,000 Cadillac Escalade, $35,000 Infiniti Q50, $123,000 Mercedes-Benz G55, $187,000 Porsche 911 GT3 RS, $150,000 Porsche Panamera Turbo S, and a $208,000 Range Rover Sport LWB. Quite a collection Steph owns, but where does he park his cars? Well, he's got that taken care of too. After selling his Alamo Mansion for $6.3 million, Steph has quietly bought a $31 million Atherton Mansion, a three-story property with a guest house and detached garage sitting on a 1.2 acre lot. It sounds like plenty of space to park his vehicles. The mansion features a combination of contemporary and traditional architectural styles, as well as numerous terraces, formal gardens, and a guest house at the far back end of the lot. But it isn't the only piece of property Curry owns. Earlier this year, Steph and his wife Aisha added an $8 million condominium to their portfolio. They became property owners of a 2,800 square foot condo on the 30th floor of the Four Seasons private residences. The 45 story building has 146 units, a gym, a game room, a private dining room with bar service, a terrace with fire pits, and a library. This means that Curry spent $39 million on homes just minutes apart. But you've seen how much Steph makes. He sure can't afford it. But Steph isn't solely focused on making the money. 
He also likes to give some of it back to his community. There are countless individual cases that show the philanthropic side of Steph Curry. Like when he raised $82,000 to fight malaria, or when he donated $118,000 to Hurricane Harvey relief. Or when Curry took part in the Warriors efforts to help arena workers losing out because the Chase Center was forced to close. Donating $1 million to the fund ran by the Warriors Community Foundation. But Curry's biggest philanthropic projects remains the Eat Learn Play Foundation he had established with his wife. The foundation is committed to unlocking the amazing potential of every child by fighting to end childhood hunger, ensuring students have access to quality education and providing a safe place for all children to play and be active. Its supporting partners include the likes of Under Armour, Golden State Warriors, Google, Rakuten, Oxygen, Deloitte, and all other giants Steph the basketball player is involved with. He truly is using his network to help the less fortunate and is making sure to give back to the community with any chance he gets. One thing's for sure, Curry's net worth is only going north from here. The guy still has a lot of basketball left to play, and it isn't crazy to assume he will finish his career wearing the Warriors jersey. What does that mean? More time spent in a technological, investment-oriented environment, and judging by the previous pattern, more business ventures and more money to be made. Where will he peak? It's impossible to assume, but it sure will be exciting to follow Steph Curry the businessman. How rich do you think Steph Curry will get? Let us know in the comments guys. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like and consider subscribing to our YouTube channel for more great basketball content. Thank you for watching.